Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about everything that's Missoula, including some news articles that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, along with the state. I got dubbing stuff. I got uh, new uh, programming from MCAT, as well as a... Um, um, some more city council stuff, and the city council uh, was talking about a new development that, uh, a lot ha that has a lot of people up in arms against. So I'll talk about that and more uh, when I get into it. So let's uh, kick things off with the weather. It is getting colder and colder outside, so if you are planning on switching from those uh, basketball shorts to uh, some pants, today may be the day to do it uh, for some of you uh, young kids out there who are uh, just going to school, you know, wear a sweater, wear shorts, pretty much that kind of weather here in Montana. But uh, it is currently 21 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 32. That was my attempt at humor. Uh, your low is going to be 20 degrees, and it's going to pretty much be fluctuating throughout this whole entire week of those temperatures and going as low as 16 degrees. Uh, according to this, um, um, this is from the uh, National Weather Service, so I just go to nationalweatherservice.gov for this information as well. So let's kick things off with a little thing that's happening in the news. So locally, Bobby Houck uh, could make more than the University of Montana's uh, president, Seth Bodner, for coaching the Grizz football team. As long as player off-field um, conduct were not to get any – were not to uh, – find any trouble, which is tied with Halk's contract, Bobby is slated to make more than Seth Bodner by $10,000. Um, in addition to the new language, the contract outlines incentives beyond his base salary of $185,000 that if Halk achieves every one of those, he will have a net total of $323,000. Several of those in incentives are double for the rate of former coach Bob Stitt received. <coughs> the subsection outlines that Hawk, all his assistant coaches, everyone who directly reports to him, and football student athletes must foster a culture of collaboration within the department, across campus, and within the community. So uh, volunteer work, um, GPA is another big thing um, when it comes to student athletes. Um, a lot of ways, uh, you know, like students have a scholarship with their um, – with football going into the Grizz football team. It seems like most of the Grizz football players that are actually playing for them have a scholarship, so a lot of times their academics are tied in with their a athletics as well. So that's a little more uh, strict on that regard of, as well. In the state news, would you uh, like to pay a monthly fee for health care? Uh, direct primary care plans have been advocated in, for before in Montana, including a bill passed in the late legislative session and vetoed by Governor Steve Bullock. They involve a patient paying a monthly fee similar to a membership to provide uh, to a provider in exchange for care. In a press release, State Auditor Matt Rosendahl, uh, Rosendale said he, his memo would help expand health care options, but also said people should still have insurance coverage for major or unexpected health care expenses. He called direct primary care a good alternative for many people seeking routine or basic health care treatment. In the veto um, of a direct primary care bill this year, Governor uh, Bullock wrote the plans offer little to no added value to most customers, uh, consumers uh, and charge fees for treatments already covered by the consumer's uh, health insurance, such as preemptive care that insurance can covers at no out of pocket cost to, cus uh, to the consumer. In national news, Justice Department Special Counsel Robert Mueller has reportedly subpoenas Trump family financial records from the German um, financial giant Deutsche, uh, uh, Deutsche Bank, sorry about that, um, a, a move that could um, signal a major new direction for his inquiry. Robert Mueller has been investigating Russian ties to the White House, and while Trump hired Mueller as a sign of cooperation, Mueller has began to look into Trump himself. Trump, his wife, daughter Ivanka, and son-in-law Jared Kushner are, un are understood to be clients of this bank, but Trump's attorneys have said that they believe that Trump's business and financial uh, agreements are out of bounds of Mueller's investigation. And Trump has denied all, um, all along that he has any financial connections with the Russians. Uh, the Trump family uh, dealings with the, the bank has been focused uh, opponents for months. 
for months. Uh, Kushner's companies received a $285 million loan from the bank one month before Election Day. Uh, Democrats of the House Financial Services Committee asked the bank in May for information about reports that it might have been a, a conduit for Russian money to the Trump family um, about reports that it might not have been. Oh, wait, wait. So that's all. But of course, this is all speculation that I've gotten from um, NPR. But a direction Mueller is taking on his ongoing investigation on Trump's, which so far Mueller has uh, charged two people in the Russia matter with money laundering, former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort and his business associate Rick Gates. Mueller's prosecu prosecutors say that they hid millions of dollars in payments from overseas. So just uh, looking at that um, and just kind of seeing what's going on with that, this is an ongoing story. And you guys can check that out by going to NPR.org, among various other sources. Um, Robert Mueller is the uh, FBI investigator who is investigating um, any kind of Russian ties in terms of election, which basically kind of uh, – the basic history was he was hired um, after former FBI director was uh, fired. And um, he was appointed to kind of run the investigation to kind of help determine whether or not there was any foul play in the last uh, 2016 election, which happened a year ago. So we'll see how that all works out later on. And uh, let's move on. And we got some new programs that are going to be airing on AMCAT. We have Missoula Out and About, where we go to the uh, Montana f uh, Missoula Food Bank. And then there's History and Hauntings. And then we also have the uh, a brown bag lecture series uh, at the University of Montana. So stay with us after um, here's some um, new clips. And when we come back, we'll talk about some city council stuff. Hi, everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television, taking you on another episode of Out and About. Today, we're at the Missoula Food Bank with Jessica Allred. Jessica, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for your interest. Thanks for coming by to see our new building. Yeah, this is amazing. We're at 1720 Wyoming Street, just a few blocks off of Russell. So what a lot of people don't know about our building on 3rd Street is that we were actually operating out of four different buildings at that point. We had two off-site warehouses. We had an administrative building. Then all of our operations went out of that tiny little store on 3rd Street. It's about an 8,000 square foot to um, 23,000 square foot transition. Yes. Um, but lots of new spaces that we'll go through today. Yeah, that's great. So come along with us. We're going to show you the new food bank. In 1908, Frank and Amanda McKean, who were also newly married, moved into the house. Both of them were older, in their 40s, and um, neither had ever been married before. Uh, she maybe had a little bit of a uh, questionable reputation, but Frank was a bartender. He'd served whiskey over the best bars all over the, uh, the gold camps and everywhere, and he was quite a character. He was about this tall, and she was very tall and statuesque, and people thought, you know, this is a really strange combination. They couldn't believe that the two of them uh, got married, but they had a very happy, apparently had a very happy marriage. Until 1918, when Frank died of the Spanish influenza epidemic. And um, I thought, you know, that's pretty tragic. So I went up to the cemetery in Virginia City, up to Hillside Cemetery, and I found this large McKean monument. And there's Frank's name, and there's a blank, but there's a... Uh, hello, everybody. My name's Nhi. I'm from Vietnam. This is the first time I've ever been to the U.S., and everything is so new and different for me. The, is this the first time I ever touched the snow, the first time I experienced such a cold weather. And then I meet with a lot of new and very friendly and cordial people, and then I uh, meet with many different organizations and eat many different types of food and I experience a lot of things. Uh, which is very different, which is very new and different from what I have in Vietnam. And like adding to my surprise, not many people here know about Vietnam. And, um, and now, uh, the other day when I met with a friend uh, in Whitefish, he asked me like, if your people still hate us, the only thing that people here know about us is just the Vietnam War. I just realized it. And then I answer him, no. Um, it's their case ago. For now, now we just uh, we forgive everything, and then like we just uh, focus on uh, reconstructing our country. 
All right, those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Uh, just so you guys know that I don't have a clip I wanted to show you of Pianissimo. Pianissimo is a ongoing piano, uh, celebrate piano series at the University of Montana. We were going to air it. Uh, we are going to air it this, uh, I think it's on Thursday, um, I believe so. So if you want um, more information about that, you can go to MCAT.org. Um, it's easy as going to MCAT.org. Just type in MCAT.org, and you can go to this website to find many more things. Um, if you click on Channel 189, you can see a more of a kind of our own vi variation of uh, YouTube, but just very Missoula-centric, where you can see uh, the most recent up in uh, it's, uh, videos uh, on our video on demand. So you can see that the most uh, recent one is the Jubilation Christmas Handbell Concert from 2015. Um, ASAP Cafe w was before that, and then, of course, Bound Mansfield Brown Bag Lecture Series, all these other programs as well that are available on video demand, including the Parade of Lights. I totally forgot. Uh, maybe I'll show you a little tidbit of uh, Parade of Lights, but uh, here is the entire schedule, and I just wanted to tell you guys that tonight is Pianissimo, which will be airing 7 p.m., so you guys can check that out uh, tonight at 7 p.m., and if you miss it tonight, you can always look back on our website, MCAT.org, for more information in terms of that. So let's move on. Um, it's time for some city council. Um, there uh, there was a public comment um, that kind of kicked off the city council that I thought was pretty interesting. He basically explains that the city's demissal of tax increases because of voters uh, voted for it doesn't mean that the city should not should not shouldn't harbor blame for certain bonds passing. So this is what he um, had to say. I voted for the school bonds. I own that part of my tax increase. I encourage you all as elected officials, if you come out and support of a city county bond. Don't talk about property taxes saying, oh, that's a voter approved initiative. You've got to own your support for a government passed bond. If you support the Fort Missoula Regional Park, you should not say that's the voters deciding it. You have to own it just like I have to own the school bond tax increase. I voted for it and I encourage you all not to try to act like that's a different part of our property taxes. All right, so uh, that was once again, um, um, Jim um, Conklin um, uh, um, expressing his grief with the city council, um, but that kind of uh, that wasn't the kind of like the main topic of what the city council was talking about. Um, Kathy Deshaw commented on a parking ordinance that would make homelessness a, a more of an issue in terms of of camps. I wanted to speak on this because from 2014 to 2016, I traveled to Seattle monthly for business. And I saw the jungle, the tent cities, and the RVs parking on the streets everywhere. And I can tell you that it became an enormous problem for the city of Seattle. Uh, uh, we've had um, various things happen at my parents' house where some of the transitional people have been sleeping down by the river. And one decided to sleep in my parents' motorhome and then was stealing from the neighborhood and collecting everything and putting it outside of the motorhome when we found out. Um, things have disappeared from the property. So I do think that it's good to address some of these things. And um, uh, a couple other things on the fine. Was the fine $100 per day or was it $100 just in one lump sum? Um, does this include the Missoula Cemetery, the streets in the cemetery, is that included in the ordinance? And does the county have something that mirrors this? Because as we know, within the city, there are some streets that are city and some are county. So they can be parked on a county street, but be in Missoula City. So I'm just wondering if there's, there's going to be a a mere ordinance by the county. All or right, so basically um, what she's talking about is she's reflecting on an ordinance that was uh, basically uh, uh, talked about in city council the other meeting. So basically the whole idea is that temporary and occasional cases of urban camping rarely generate complaints, but there have been cases where individuals have parked in neighborhoods for long periods of time, presented significant problems for residents, and gener generated citizen nuisance complaints that have required code enforcement and law enforcement interventions. The obvious issue created by urban camping related to public health um, and uh, neighborhood impacts. Um, the whole idea of a neighborhood camping is that if someone parks their car and it basically sleeps 
in their car in the neighborhood. And they wanted, and the city of Missoula wanted to address this and adopt a resolution of intention to annex and incorporate within the boundaries of the city of Missoula. Th- uh, uh, so, no, 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 sorry, that was a whole other thing. Let's not, let's not, I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's kind of like one of the things that were discussed at the city council meeting. Um, they just wanted to reword it and just talk a little bit more about this ordinance in terms of like what are the parameters behind camping and what kind of enforcement can be done as well. Um, but let's move on. Um, adopt a resolution to of intention to annex and incorporate the boundaries of the city of Missoula, three tracts of land located west of Grove Street and the south of Clark Fork River, further described as it meets in the boundaries of petition. Uh, the zone annex exhibit list. Um, so the whole idea is that they wanted to uh, make townhomes. And um, townhomes in a certain an, another area um, of the city of Missoula. So Morgan uh, Horsch- Hershenberger is one of many people in the neighborhood who are against um, these townhomes. It, um, it's hard to have change happen in the neighborhood and housing developments. Um, nobody that I talk to in our community is against having a housing development. What we're against is um, the proposed density and the proposed traffic at eight houses per acre. The whole area is all four houses, one to four houses per acre, or excuse me, the vast majority of the area. Grove Street is the only street that serves our area. Any house that's accessed by Grove Street, the only access to the house is Grove Street. And I think that that's material before we get started. So I have some prepared remarks here that, um, that, we, that we agreed upon as a community. Um, due to the three to three minute rule, I'm not gonna be able to get through these. And what, so what we decided is I'm gonna read through as far as I can get, and then somebody else from my community is gonna pick up where I left off. But can everybody who's um, part here to protest the Colin Ditch place raise your hand right now? So you can sub- see we, we've got a substantial neighborhood uh, agreement that we're, we've got some concerns here. All right, so that was um, Morgan Hershenberger uh, talking about their, um, his concerns along with many of the other neighborhoods' concerns as well. Um, Lauren Myers uh, is, is also one of the um, people in the neighborhood who is uh, concerned about overpopulation in small areas, basically talking about Enfill. And this is what she had to say. I literally just saw the sign posted that's like this big on the fence um, a couple of days ago. So there was not much public notice for the people that live there. And I know a big concern is definitely the traffic, but as a parent, um, I'm concerned about um, if there's going to be that many more people. They're probably slated to go to Hawthorne, which is already way above capacity for children. And I know that a bunch of developments just went in down 3rd Street. And so I'm wondering where, where are these kids going to go to school? Because I know that Hawthorne can't accommodate them. And I mean, they're going, it's just a concern that I have for that area, as well as the traffic. And also, the park seems like a nice idea, but how are people going to access that if there's only five off-street parkings? And it's supposed to be a park open space for the city, but how are people going to access that? And it's just a really small portion at the very end of the development that just seems... Um, I don't know, like they're trying to um, make it appealing to people that they're going to be giving us open space, but a half an acre as a park dedicated to the city just seems really small to me with that many people coming. Um, so those are just my concerns. That All I- right, so that was uh, Lauren Miller uh, talking about some of her concerns, as you just heard. Um, I think the, uh, the, the major thing thing oh wait did i just delete a whole bunch of stuff N- okay anyways sorry i'm just kind of like distracted um so uh th- there's a lot of people who don't want this to happen obviously um and it turns out that uh and, and um turns uh in in terms of high density homes this is something that has been discussed in the our missoula growth policy and how missoulians wanted their homes and places to live many issues that i've basically seen is that the establishment of neighborhoods that are growing and there's just not enough people to fill these neighborhoods so a lot of times with the development they want to build a uh, more um sizable homes to fit the uh, amount of people who are moving here so they want to make smaller homes um, on uh, these partial land so maybe uh, six homes on an acre versus four homes on an acre of land um, and and a lot of people are not really happy about the um, changes that are going on in there and that the city of Missoula it really wants to find a way to uh, in, improve the amount of population in terms of just like having a general area where people are close to certain amenities without having to uh, uh, basically uh, subject certain areas to um, 
suburban culture because a lot, lot of uh, what um, cities have been trying to move away from is suburban culture and try to figure out ways to have more of that infill grow that uh, people want to have so they can I mean it, it's, it's it's very interesting how like um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of NIMBY in, in, in terms of this like people want to ha have things happen but they just don't want it in their backyard and this is something that's really concerned and of course needless to say I don't want to get into a little more, more uh, but needless to say this went back to committee and they will talk about this and, and how the residents want their neighborhood to develop in these areas you can look for it on the city of Missoula's website uh, by going on to uh, ci.missoula.mt.us. This is a great website for you can find out more information about the city of Missoula city meetings and committee meetings of anything that's happening in the city of Missoula. Um, but I just want to do a word of the wise is that um, most of these uh, residents in the Grove area were notified in letters and um, the kind of letters that they sent out were those that had to be signed. Um, so they got not so the city would be notified that the letters were delivered to these spe specific homes. I think it was back in October, and and then of course the signs that she was talking about and for the development of these townhomes was uh, put up in November. So, just uh, kind of a, a word to what's going on uh, with uh, with some of these neighborhoods and public speaking. So the uh, community they're going to be talking about this a little bit more on. Um, let me see here real quick. It looks. From what I heard, it was on December 18th, which is two weeks from the Monday. So so they'll be talking about this um, basically on December 18th a little bit more. So if you have your concerns or you have any ideas, you can go to that city council meeting on Monday, no December 18th. But that concludes your uh, city council report of the day. I'll have um, some more information on Friday, maybe not about that, but maybe about something else. But Let's uh, t change the tone a little bit. It's uh, the Christmas season, and I, uh, I'm i always looking for public domain films that involve Santa Claus that I can um, basically redub their voices. So here is dub and stuff from uh, Santa and the Fairy Snow Queen from 1951. All right, boys, time to get up. Huh, you two girls. <laughs> Let's, wait a minute. How are you guys as well? We're all just having a good time. Just making things come to life that are technically already alive, but still, you know, it's it, it's it's a movie. Just 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 go with it. Sing and dance, dance and sing. Everybody just have a good time. Sing and dance, and dance and sing. <laughs> I think that was pretty good. Nothing like improv to make you go all out. Wouldn't you say, Santa Claus? Wouldn't you say, huh? What do you think of my singing? It's pretty dope, isn't it? It's pretty well, awesome. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, don't get too carried away there, young Missy. You don't know what you're playing with. You're bringing uh, things to life, and you're uh, forcing them to dance and sing. It's kind of, uh, I think that's called slavery, or at least Broadway. Uh, don't be ridiculous. Uh, I'm not enslaving you, am I? Yes. What's that? Well, you did bring us to life. Ho, ho, ho. Well, um, I, I don't know how to respond to that. Um, no? I'm a jack-in-the-box, so my life isn't even good. Well, I would never intentionally bring people back to life. Um, it's just that... I, I guess I just don't know my own strength. Oh. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong, Master? You okay? I've just made a terrible mistake. How do I reverse it? Uh, I don't even know the concept of death. Just, You'll just have to put to them life. down. No, I don't think so. Hey, now we oh, can that was a close like one. Oh, stop. Uh, what about stop. 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 Get, no, stop. Oh yeah, and just so you guys know, I just make those so I don't have to talk the whole entire show. But here is another part of the show where I like to talk some more. It is time for your events. So let's talk about some events that are happening. The Missoula Public Library is kicking off Food for Finds, which is for people who uh, checked out books but totally forgot that they had books and have racked up quite amount, uh, quite a good amount of fines. You bring non-perishable food to the Missoula Public Library all month of December, and you can get uh, some... Um, 
I, I, I guess the thing is store credits from Missoula Public Library, and you can do that. It's happening basically from now until oh, December 9th. It looks like now until this Saturday. So make sure you do non-perishable food. It's food for fines at Missoula Public Library, and you can check out it. Any of these days at the Missoula Public Library because it's going to be ongoing. Um, from 10 a.m. to about 12 noon, indoor fun with Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Roots Acro Sports Center, and Mismo Gymnastics. And I'm, I'm, I think Bitterroot's still a thing, um, so you can check that out as well. So Mystery Activity is happening at the uh, Family's First Children's Museum, so there will be something fun at the Children's Museum, but half the fun is guessing what it will be, and it's going to be at the Family's First Children's Museum from 11 to 12. Lions Club Tree Sale, so if you guys are still looking for a tree for this Christmas time, Lions uh, Club Tree Sale is happening from the, at the Missoula uh, Fairgrounds. Get your holiday trees from the Missoula Lions Club at the Missoula County Fairgrounds Llama Barn, and they're going to start around, um, uh, they're going to basically start around noon, so you can check that out pretty much all day. Um, I'm pretty sure they only, they'll do it for a good amount of time, so you might want to check them out on the Lions Club website. Scrabble and Bridge is going to be at the Senior Center at 1230-ish, so you can check that out. Um, Middle School Writers Group is going to be at uh, 330 at the Middle Public Library. Improve your writing skills. I just wanted to kind of go through this as quickly as possible because there's a lot of learning things happening tonight. You're Wednesday night, so let me talk about that. Um, if you're looking into learn, getting um, certified in CPR and AED, um, you can. Um, they're doing all these classes. The, the, the Heart Saver course includes instruction on basic life support, BLS, uh, CPR skills for helping victims of all ages, um, including like babies and children, because apparently when you're doing CPR, performing CPR on an adult, it's completely different than performing CPR on a child and even a baby. So if a uh, baby run, if you need to perform CPR on a baby, you're not actually supposed to use your your body. You're supposed to use two fingers. I didn't know that until, but of course that might have changed because CPR training is uh, constant and has to be renewed every year or two. So just check check that out, and that's going to be at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center starting at 5 p.m. Um, there's the centen uh, centennial of Finland's independence is going to be at the Downtown Art Park at 6 p.m. This year marks fin Finland's 100-year anniversary of it as an independent state. Join them for a commemoration of Finnish uh, centennial on Finland's official Independence Day, December 6th, 2017. Surrounded by good company, Finnish flags, blue and white lights, music, and candles. There's a 45th Annual Officer of the Year Banquet, University of Montana. Since 1972, the University uh, Missoula Exchange Club has hosted the Mo Missoula Law Enforcement Banquet to honor area officers for their incredible service and personal sacrifice to protect and to safeguard our community. And this is happening from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, the uh, event happens at 7 p.m. where they'll c commemorate and talk about who is the outstanding member as well. Um, do-it-yourself holiday class is as pendant jewelry. So if you're learning to make jewelry and then you can sell out of the winter market, thanks. Um, Zootown Arts Community Center is hosting a do-it-yourself pendant jewelry at 6 p.m. You can create a pendant of metalsmith artist Amber w w uh, Wittenberg. This class will investigate the craft of jewelry making and metal smithing, learning the techniques of metal stamping, beading, texture metal with a hammer. You'll leave this class with your own handcrafted jewelry pieces and give as a gift uh, or keep it yourself. Um, holiday candy making at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. This is, is the season for not eating candy, but making your own homemade delights for gifts or to enjoy yourself. If you love sweets, this is the class for you starting at 6 p.m. at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. Keeping children safe, it's everyone's responsibility. Dickinson's Lifelong Learning Center, um, you're making candy, and then uh, the next thing up, you got to keep these kids safe with a class that is pre-approved for two credit hours for early childhood practitioner registry. Um, so um, check, uh, basically, although most people don't realize this, um, child sexual abuse is significant risk, risk facing children today, and the consequences of abuse can be lifelong. Parents, child care providers, teachers, social workers, and anyone who is, not, who is in contact with children are encouraged to attend this workshop based on the darkness to light training. Learn facts, prevention techniques, and the simple steps to keep children safe. So this has happened at the Dickinson Life Learning Center at 6 p.m. Um, 
A 3D printing workshop is going to be at the Missoula Public Library at 6.30 p.m. Missoula Public Library hosts a monthly uh, workshop for anybody who's interested in learning more about 3D printing. And it's in the makerspace, which is a great way to create and make things at a, with the Missoula's um, own 3D printer. The Missoula Public Library is a service for the public for people to come down and get information and learn new trades and tricks um, through books or by practical means in the makerspace. Um, here are some of your late night events that are happening. Holiday this year with Melissa Forrett and Tyler B um, Barham is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Trivial Beer Sue is going to be at the Press Box. Karaoke is going to be at Eagles Lodge. Um, um, karaoke is going to be at the Badlander. And of course, karaoke is going to be at the San Sunrise Saloon later that night as well. Uh, VFW is going to do a Mizzou Open Deck Society DJ party. Ooh. So that's kind of what's happening on that day. I have a uh, I have an art clip, and this is gonna, from the Gallery of the Visual Arts at the Social Science Building at the University of Montana, and it will end uh, by the end of this week. So you guys got to check it out. Um, so uh, when I come back, I'll talk about your Thursday events. I want to thank our very own Rick Phillips for producing and creating uh, the uh, out and about um, uh, artists. Um, so you can check out a lot of art clips that have been provided by Rick Phillips as well. Um, you can just go to our MCAT uh, YouTube channel, MCAT TV. You can just look it up on um, YouTube and you can find these art clips and more. Just check out the Missoula art scene from the past. Um, it's, it's, it's just a great resource to do that as well. But let's move on to some Thursday events that are starting early morning Thursday. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Zootown Arts Community Center is hosting an early artist program, Poetry. So using poetry as inspiration, early artists will learn to tell stories through listening, play, and tactical um, tactile art making. Mixed media exploration guided by the professional youth program instructor, Carleen Katner. Kantner, sorry about that. Um, and that's starting 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, generations working together. Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce is doing a, uh, a thir on Thursday the 7th at uh, 9 a.m. Glacier HR Services and uh, offer an interactive presentation on how to better work and communicate better through the generations. Number one, building a foundation. Number two, a multi-general workforce. It's no longer your dad slash mom's workplace. Um, communication and personal assessment using the right um, combinations of be behaviors and the right uh, generation feedback and self-assessment offered by Bob Marshinich of Glacier HR Service Incorporated. Um, Tiny Tales story time at Missoula Public Library and even more fun story time at Families First Children's Museum starting at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Coffee and foster care. Starbucks on South Reserve is doing a complimentary coffee and learn about foster care and adoption. You can meet with their family developer, Bill Neves, and learn about local children who who, who are kids waiting for safe and loving homes. So if you're interested in, in adopting and you want to just uh, have a simple coffee and just hang out 
Um, Starbucks is the place to be starting noon tomorrow. So uh, make it and take it crafts at the Big Sky Branch. Missoula Public Library is doing a come and make a unique uh, crafts and holiday gifts this season at Big Sky Branch, which is at the high school, as a, which is at Big Sky High School Library. You can't miss it. Their crafts call for today is Sharpie mugs. Mugs are provided, limited to 10 participants. Sign up at the library or call them at 728-2400, extension number 8605. So the generic... Um, um, MCPS number, which is 728-2400, and the extension number is 8605. Of course, you can always ask for the Big Sky Branch as well. Veteran Wild Game Cookout. Play, vi Playfair Park at 4 p.m. is hosting Montana veterans and their friends to gather and cook elk steaks and burgers and swap stories about why our public lands are so important to veterans. MUD is do, uh, doing a do-it-yourself holiday wreath workshop at 6 p.m. Um, home Resource Community Room. Um, join for the MUD's final workshop of 2017 and the fourth in our series of earth-friendly floral design. We have together a beautiful winter inspiration wreath for your home in this informative workshop. And that's happening at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Smurf at Stone Mill Site Community As Advisory Group, Frenchtown Fire Hall, um, starting at 6 p.m. at the Frenchtown Fire Hall. You get to learn about Smurf at Stone and see what they're, where they're at. Um, it's basically every first Thursday of every month to discuss a cleanup of the former Smurf at Stone Mill Site, which is a super fun site. Um, so you can check that out. You can also go to the Facebook. Um, it's slash, um, you just go to facebook.com slash Frenchtown C A G. So again, that number that uh, to get more information, you can go to facebook.com slash Frenchtown C A G. And of course, you can go to uh, the EPA.gov slash Superfund slash Smurfit dash Stone to learn more information about that as well. Um, and then, of course, um, the final thing that's happening um, tomorrow night is uh, how Lewis and Clark affected Montana's wildlife species. So at starting at 7 p.m. tomorrow at the Lolo Community Center, public presentation by Dr. Carrie Forrest. Retired UM wildlife professor and author of The Mammals of Montana will present a free public lecture on how Lewis and Clark observations affected Montana's wildlife species for better or for worse, sponsored by Traveler's Rest chapter of the Lewis and Clark Trail Foundation. You can check that out happening at the Lolo Community Center tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Lolo is not that far away, but um, here are a couple other things that are happening. Um, they have an open mic at the Green Alternative to Dispensary. It's going to be rock, music, folk, all that wonderful stuff as well. Um, uh, MissoulaEvents.net is a great resource for you guys to learn more information about what's upcoming and more. But it looks like my internet is running slow, so I might have to stop it right then and there. So if you guys want more information about MCAT and our uh, upcoming uh, winter days, go to MCAT.org. Winter days is a... Um, it's a camp for uh, parents, or as we, as, we, as uh, Kim Anderson on Missoula Live calls it, parent aid. So starting Wednesday, December 27th, two days after Christmas, uh, if you're already sick of your kids, you can send them over to us from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have some pre-care starting as early as 8 a.m. Um, this is a more of just kind of like hanging out. Maybe the kids can make movies, whatever. We're not promising that the kids will make anything from this, but it's a nice thing to do. And it's $99 for three days, uh, three days for, from 9 to 3 p.m. Basically, the times you'd have for um, some um, kids to do. Um, well, kids were, would be in school. Will they get to hang out here? Um, make some videos, watch some videos, and just do some overall public access television fun here at, at MCAT. If you want more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you. Write it out twice. Wake Up Missoula is your source for everything Missoula, and it is the last best morning show. And at last, I am done. So thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Um, I will have uh, your flagship Friday video of the week this Friday and also a bunch of other cool little short videos as well. So stay with us. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. <laughs>